Today I'll be looking at Microsoft 365, specifically we'll be looking at spam. Yes, that dreaded email that comes in that offers you, you know, bogus things from uh, prints somewhere that's leaving you money or some kind of casino that wants to promote uh, their new, I don't know, extra credits and tokens that they're offering you. You want to get rid of all that. And of course, you especially want to reduce those to decrease your footprint, lessen the potential for security risks. And so what you want to do is make sure that you're following me along using the global administrator or global admin uh, user that you have. So if you've created the account, you should have all these rights. If you're a larger account, if you're a large corporate account, then you need to make sure that you have the proper account to be able to modify these. So first thing you're going to want to do is go to portal.office.com and that is the main place where you can go into the Microsoft 365 portal. So the environment is controlled through there. Um, so as soon as you go in there, if you're not seeing my screen, what you're going to want to do, because there's a lot of different place, you know, nooks and crannies that you can get into is go ahead right on the very top left you're going to see a bunch of little dots there and that is the app launcher so if you click on that you're then going to click into admin and that will in effect bring you back to this so it doesn't look like much at first so what you'll want to do is click on show all and then you've got a whole bunch of things on the bottom so this is where you could go into the Azure Active Directory this is where you can go into exchange this is where you're going into you know security and compliance uh, specifically today we're talking about rules and how to reduce spam so that's what I'm going to concentrate on but please understand that when you set up things uh, in Microsoft 365 that you are in effect creating an account in Azure, you're in effect, I mean, you've got all these things that just happen and you may not be aware of them. You may never go into them, which you probably should at some point go take a look. But if all you've paid for is email, then that is um, also, you know, part of that is all included as part of the back end. So what you want to do is go ahead and click on security and we're going to go ahead and we're going to see some numbers in here and the whole point is to improve it. So you're going to see a score and you're going to see a few other things. What we want to do is go ahead and go right to where it says policies and rules right there on the left. And this is really where the rubber meets the road. So what you're going to do is you're going to see a threat policy. So let's click on that. Now, one of the first thing I would suggest if you don't want to spend a lot of time looking at each item right from the get-go. Um, you've got preset security policies. There's also a configuration analyzer. Great thing to use and let's go ahead and start with that. Now this is an account um, that doesn't have too many rules applied and so forth so I just want to go ahead and show you. So you've got standard recommendations and strict recommendations and if I were to change to strict you'll see on the top are the different recommendations. So you've got four that deal with anti-spam one that deals with anti-phishing, and one that deals with anti-malware. So for example, they have bulk email threshold. Right now it is set to six, and they're suggesting you move it to four. So if I were to want to change it, I have several options. I can click on it, and then I could say apply recommendations, or I can actually go and view the policy itself. What does it do? What is included in it? So if I want to apply it, of course I can select them all and just click on apply. And I don't suggest that you necessarily do this blindly uh, without understanding what you're doing. Um, the counter uh, balance to this is if you tighten up everything to such a degree, you may end up with things never appearing in your Outlook if you're using Outlook or, or whatever mail application you're using, um, even through the browser. So in that case, you might want to pay attention to what goes into the quarantine area and that is under uh, review and that's you'll you'll have it right there on the upper left and just click on that and you'll see whatever is in your quarantine right now so it's not a bad idea once in a while to go in there to make sure that you don't uh, you know potentially something from an actual legit uh, bank account that says hey you're whatever it is you know most of the time it might just be promotions and whatnot so they would be spammed uh, and removed but there's always the off chance that there is something in there from a potential client that, you know, just maybe 
worded things or maybe have uh, sent out a lot of emails on their end. They've been tagged as spam. Maybe they're not. So there are false positives out there. So if we look at some of the things such as, um, let's see, uh, allowed sender, allows threshold, uh, empty messages, actually, I believe here, uh, allowed uh, sender domains. So let's go have a look. So if I select this, and I could go ahead and click on view policy. So let's go have a look at what one of these things looks like. So here we are. So this controls quite a few things. So bulk email threshold. So URL to biz or info websites. Okay, so maybe these are not, um, I, I won't say they're not legit websites, but they're potentially more likely to be spam or to be promoting some kind of product. So maybe we turn that on. Uh, image links to remote sites that also could be used in a nefarious way in the sense that you could be getting an image that then shoots back to a legit uh, picture on a server and then on their end um, later on could go and switch the image and all of a sudden you've got uh, the point is they could put an image there with content uh, viruses and so forth you know into them like in a gif file and so you probably want to turn this off. Numeric IP addresses and URL. What does that mean? Well, instead of getting google.com, it's going to be written an IP address. So it's a 1.1.1.1 type of address. So anyway, you get the point. Um, things, you know, redirect to other ports, empty messages. Most of these, I would say, um, should be turned on um, things like SPF record. What that is, is when they register, and you've probably done this yourself, and if you have not done so, please go ahead and do that. Um, but basically what it will do is it's it's a way of confirming that is your domain and is tied to your IP address and to your... So it's, it's a way of allowing the system, in this case, the Microsoft 365, of verifying the, the sender of uh, the, you know, the email or spam or depending on whatever it is. Uh, so a lot of the rest of those are um, really uh, bulk email action. So you, you'll see on the bottom where it says, okay, what do you do? You quarantine. And so you've got a lot of functionality. And of course, the whole idea behind this analyzer is the fact that it is a quick and dirty way to fix this. So if you say, you know what, it makes sense. Sure. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply. And like I said, it is um, highly suggested to, uh, you know, make, understand, I guess, what you're, uh, you're, you're clicking on and agreeing to. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the preset security policies that are on here. So what you can do is, depending on the level that you are at, um, so if you go ahead and add the extra 365 Defender, and there's Plan 1, there's Plan 2, uh, then the, the standard protection here would allow you to be enabled. What that would do is it would actually give you access to the safe attachments and the safe links. Uh, in my case, I turned it off on purpose to be able to show you what happens and to see for myself that it would not be available uh, just because usually it is there. And so let's take a quick look here at the anti-phishing. So by default, you have one that is there. It is at the lowest. You can, of course, go ahead and create a new one. So you could say, okay, so I'm going to create uh, anti, I'm just going to call it, uh, I don't know. let's leave it to there. And do next. And okay, so who are we putting it in for? So we could say, well, I really want to put it for all of my domain. Okay, so enable spoof intelligence. Next, okay, so show first contact. Okay, here we go. So move messages to the recipient's junk folder. This is, or you can quarantine. So I'm going to say, okay, move it to the folder, say next, and there we go. Okay, so what I've done is I've basically created a little rule, which ironically is probably very similar to the one that's already there. Um, first contact safety tip is off. 
So ours is on. All right. Next, let's go into anti-spam. Let's do it this way as well. And we'll say spam, spam, spam. There we go. So what we want to do is, again, we want to create it. I'm going to put my domain, or one of my domains, as you can tell, I've got more than one. And uh, we'll do next. Actually, what was the other? No, that's fine. Okay. And so what we want to do now is we want to say, okay, what level of uh, spam do we want? So this, so the higher bulk email threshold means more bulk email will be delivered. So if you're getting a lot of spam, what you want to do is potentially reduce this. And so image links to remote websites, we're going to stop it. So we, basically what it does is each one of these increases the spam score. So numeric, definitely. Uh, redirect to other ports, uh, you bet. Biz or info, and this is where you can go and be very selective. So empty messages, well, that would be strange. So we're going to say on as well. Embedded, um, so you can Java, you know, nobody should be sending Java or VB scripts. Um, forms, well, I'm not expecting forms, so I'm not going to do that. Frames, let's take it all out. Web bugs and HTML, definitely. Object tags, sure. Sensitive words, again, you can go and change those. And if you have any questions, for, well, not for any of these, but some of these have little eyes here. So what you can go is click on, it'll say Microsoft maintains a dynamic but non-editable list of words that are associated with potential offensive language. So that will look at those. And the other one is the SPF I was telling you earlier, which is not a type of sunscreen. In this case, it is um, really a sender policy framework. So it's written right there, and I'd actually forgotten what that stood for, so that's perfect. And uh, sender ID, if you click on there, so if it's the message fail, the combination of, and then, so there's two things there, the SPF and the sender ID, which helps protect against messages, headers that contain forged senders. So if you really want to make sure that you're getting, um, you know, the, I guess as, as tight as you can, uh, backscatter, I actually forgot what backscatter is. So we're going to put this as well. Contain specific language. Um, no, and from these countries. So we're going to leave those off. And I'm going to say next. And then it's going to say, okay. So if it is spam, move to the junk folder. If it's high confidence spam, then I could say, okay, quarantine. And we're going to say default. Actually, it doesn't really, I'm going to say admin only access. Phishing. So we want to quarantine as well. Actually, I don't know if I have to select this. I guess I could have left that. So high confidence phishing also. So we're going to do that. Uh, bulk. Bulk messages should definitely be going to. And okay, retain spam for how many days? 30 days. So it gives me a bit of time to go into the quarantine, take a look at the list, make sure that the information that is there is all spam or whatever is junk, basically, or viruses, phishing, malware, all those things. So um, let's go ahead and see what the bottom is. Enable safety tips, zero hour auto purge, enable. Okay, so we're good. So we say next and say next. And so now it gives us a review of it. And I'm going to say create. And from this point on, I now have a rule called spam, spam, spam. And that should be it. That's a submitting. There we go. And we now have a new policy with a fancy name. Click on done. And there it is. So that's the priority. And we're going to go back here and we're going to go to the anti-malware. So the anti-malware we could also create one that does the same thing. We'll call it malware. Malware. There we go. I'm into doubles today. And click on here and do next. And so what we're going to do is we're going to enable attachments that are of certain types to be eliminated. Now, why would you do this? Uh, you don't want an executable, for example, if you're in a Windows environment. 
because that's something that if you click on it would run so execute and it could be of course um, you know something that modifies your operating system something that writes to your hard drive something that deletes things something that loads something else so definitely would not be good uh, the rest of these you know, things like you know registry settings you don't want that either uh, CABs are uh, basically a, a form of uh, compressed delivery mechanism that Microsoft uh, is, is fond of and um, so the point is is you've got things like doc m so those of you who know word know that usually you see dot doc or doc x and the m is basically for macro what that means is they're delivering to you a word document or, or pretending to be a word document potentially with a macro inside and a macro is basically a script and that script will run when you open it so that also could be getting things or doing things or erasing things you don't want that so uh you'll also so we can enable this and we can go to our policies here further so notify when messages are quarantined as malware um, you can get notifications i mean if you want to see uh you know we could certainly leave little messages and so forth i'm not sure if it's worth it i mean if you're gonna uh, it, it might be nice to see how many of these you're getting um, you know, if you're getting a whole lot of these, you're going to want to shoot me for having a notification. So I would probably leave that off. I'm going to leave it on and see what happens in the next couple of days. So I am pretty much done here. And that's what I wanted to show you in a nutshell. I'm trying to think if there's anything else here that really, uh, warrants, but, um, no, that, that should be, I mean, that really should reduce the amount of spam you're getting and you should be able to uh you've, I mean, you've got the rest of the policies here and so forth but just the anti-spam the anti-malware and the anti um phishing really are the trifecta to keeping your environment safer now i would recommend that you activate the microsoft 365 defender uh look it up there is a plan one which is a nice base and there's a plan two as well if you're a larger organization uh also the, it may come depending on which subscription you have so before you know, you go out and tell me, hey, I don't need to subscribe. I'm getting it for free. Well, if you got an E5, for example, I know that there's more features included. If you've got a very basic one, then you may want to add this to your subscription. So I hope this uh, was useful and helpful and saved you uh, from potentially getting contaminated out there. Of course, uh, still con continue to tell you to get yourself a firewall if you don't have one of those bunch of brands out there sophos uh, watchguard so forth we've got other videos check those out uh, it's very very important these days to have uh, something that will protect you you know basically create your uh, your internal bubble if i can put it that way so that you've got a gatekeeper and of course uh, it's not bad either to run or make sure you are running antivirus on your machines if you've got windows 10 windows 11 the good news is you do have microsoft defender built in uh, you can go ahead and also uh, look at some of the uh, paid ones which uh, may or may not i guess it depends on which one and of course what you're subjected to uh, it may give you additional benefits and may prevent things better again it all depends on what you're getting um, when you run tests it all depends on the type of attack so I hope this was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I'm Bob Pelo and CTO Bob. Thank you so much for uh, joining us today. And of course, leave comments below. I love reading those. You can visit us as well as www.ctobob.com. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.